Well, switching from 52 to 50 and back sounds good. Let's automate it. But before we automate it, we make a little digression into programming paradigms. Because what we are going to use right now is an object. We are already using objects, but it's not so plain to see. Uh, but it will be quite plain to see in a minute. So uh, let's talk about programming paradigms. So that you have a little bit of understanding of what an object is. So in the very early days of computing, until let's say the end of the 60s more or less, there were hardly any alternatives to, uh, alternatives to writing programs directly in or to machine code. That would be uh, writing the, command, the, the commands that the processor can more or less directly understand. That's quite hard if you want to program music or a video game because these are not functions that a processor actually has. They are much more generic and much more low level. So starting in the 1970s, the procedural languages came up. They were not so strongly oriented to processor hardware, but rather uh, they were mostly mathematics oriented. So they introduced the concept of a function. We will use functions here as well, uh, which is very similar to what we know from mathematics. Uh, mathematics uh, no functions. Uh, you call them with an argument, you get a value back and uh, this in, in a generalized way is something that procedural languages can do. There was a, quite a good opportunity to structure code better and uh, well uh, come a bit closer to the human that wants to uh, do some a task with the computer with a program and a little bit further away from the the iron from the silicon from the hardware but uh, mathematics is organized for for example in functions etc while our world is not and this led us to the next paradigm which is object oriented programming and object-oriented programming uh, tries to uh, use inside a program concepts that we know from our perception of the real world our real world as we perceive it is not organized in functions and values and arguments and, well, and let's say calculated return values but rather in uh, objects that have properties and, and, beh and a behavior and also we tend to categorize things like we have a vehicle and a, spe a special kind of vehicle maybe a car or another one a bicycle and well we have hierarchies uh, and um, we derive uh, types or classes from one another. So what we uh, try to do with object-oriented programming is we want to represent our real world uh, in, in which we have objects with properties and a behavior. And uh, the programming language that is behind that all here is Ruby. I think I mentioned that uh, is a object-oriented language and uh, the number, a, a simple number, an integer number with a whole, uh, a whole number like one, two, three. There are also objects in Ruby and that means they do not only have properties but they also may have a behavior and that is kind of a, a function that I can call on this object. So what we are trying to do here for a little bit of uh, demonstration, I can say I have a 
3 and I use the method the behavior times and say well let's say play 60 sleep 1 and let's see what that does let's hit run okay three times so I called the method times on my object 3 and this is a very simple way of executing a loop but um, it's a special loop which does something exactly the times that I indicate here. So let's go back and go back to the start of what we actually wanted to do. We wanted to uh, go back and forth with the 5250 here in our loop here. So we have this one here and we want to go to 50 and then back to 52, okay? So, and what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's do 16 times to play 52. Let's sustain it for two, two beats, and we need an end here, okay? So that will be 16 times the 52. If I add nothing else, then it will continue with the next 16 and we won't hear any difference. So let's do 8 times, play 15, sustain also, let's sustain 2, and sleep also for 1 beat, and, and now we rerun. Oh no, I did a syntax error. it eight times. You can see the error is here. I forgot to do. Now if I hit rerun, we will run into a problem which we will solve later. It will not it will not quite synchronize with the other loop. So I slide over. It's the long one here. Okay. 16 times. Times. Let's do zero five so that you can hear it more clearly. Okay. Okay. Now we get the shorter notes. And now, okay, fifteen. And we jump back here. This loop here and jump here. Okay, and still we can manage these loops live with different synths, different samples, etc. So, one thing that I'm not sure if I have said already was something that is for those of you who are, uh, well, musicians, if I want to know what note, whoop, what note a certain number is, then I can use something like this, note info. So what is A52? Let's run this and you will see the answer here. It's an E3, okay? Well, that aside topic, and that was that.